in data collection, so in data collection, the first part is the uh, instrument. Instrument. So for primary data collection, the most uh, common instrument is questionnaire. So in methodology, in data collection process, we need to explain the process of uh, questionnaire development. Another part is population and sampling. It's very important for uh, data collection. What's the meaning of population and uh, sampling and sample frame? Okay. Population. Population include, population contains all possible member that can answer to your, all possible respondent that can answer to your question, can answer to your questionnaire, can complete your questionnaire. All possible respondent. So all these possible respondents establish your population. So in first place, you need to identify your population. For example, I want to do research on uh, tourist experience, right? I want to do research on international tourist experience in heritage site, right? This is objective of my research. So I want to uh, investigate the factors influence on uh, uh, tourist experience in heritage site. I review the literature and create conceptual framework and create my, uh, design my questionnaire based on previous study, do, uh, already did the pilot test and pre-test. Now finalize my questionnaire. So I have uh, a few uh, items to measure in this questionnaire. Who are my respondents? Anybody can answer? Who, who, who are my population members? Anybody for this research? Tourists. Tourists, eh? Tourists, but uh, what type of tourists? Tourists. Yes. Oh, international, not domestic. International, international tourists, okay. Yes. We need to narrow down to understand our population first. Okay, international tourists. Any other criteria? All international tourists? Experience, What's I think, it? frequent travels, travelers. Those who have travelers. visited the heritage sites. Ah, heritage site. Because objective is tourist experience in heritage site. So we need to collect data from tourists or visiting heritage site. We cannot uh, collect data from tourists uh, or uh, going to shopping mall. No. Because we want to investigate experiences in heritage site, right? So based on this criteria, in first place, we need to identify population member. Who are our population members? all possible respondents based on our research, based on our framework, based on our objective. So population is uh, exactly connected to our research, right? Okay, so this is the first place. We need to identify population. Second place, sampling frame. Sampling frame among population, among population, and for all population member, most of time, always some part of population are accessible for us. And we can collect data from these type of population, these part of population. Right? 
for example, for example, uh, we want to investigate the uh, motivation of uh, undergraduate students and the factor influence on motivation of undergraduate students, right? So all, our population can be all undergraduate students, but we want to investigate in Malaysia. So all pop undergraduate student in Malaysia can be our population, right? But only, only Taylor's University allow us to collect data from undergraduate students. So this is sampling frame. We only can collect data from this part of population. Because collecting data from whole population, we face with some limitation. Government don't allow us to collect data from, for example, public university. And other private university also don't allow us to collect. So we have only access to this part of data, right? So this is our sampling frame. Sampling frame. Hello? Yes. May I ask a question? Uh, yeah. So if uh, according to your example, if only Taylor's University allows to uh, do the uh, do the research, so does that mean the result can be generalized? For example, if uh, we were, uh, okay. Later, later, I will discuss about generalization. Generalization is a very tricky concept. We need to be very careful about generalization. Later, I uh, will explain, okay? Let's go ahead and see. Excuse me. Hello, Professor. I have a yes. question that uh, since uh, in reality, we only can collect data from Taylor's, for example. So does it mean that we are doing a case study in Taylor's? No, or? no, no. It's not, no. it's not a case study. Case study is different things. Case study research is something that uh, is a type of research that uh, some characteristic of this case is focus of your research. Okay, for example, you want to uh, investigate leadership, right? You can do leadership study in different ways. Leadership among politicians, right? So you can do uh, quantitative research and uh, design your questionnaire and uh, uh, distribute among different politicians and collect data and analyze, right? But sometimes you decide based on some characteristic of some people like uh, Barack Obama, right? Right? So yeah. you decide to analyze Barack Obama. Leadership of Barack Obama. So this is a case study, right? So case can be one person or can be one specific uh, company, one specific company. But the focus of your research should be the characteristic of this company. So when you want to do some research on behavioral intention, but for doing research for this behavioral intention, you choose some company because of some limitation is not case study. Because the focus of your research is behavioral intention is not some characteristic of these companies. So case study has a specific definition. We collect data, always we collect our data from a study area, right? because of limitation, because of limitation that now I mentioned. For international tourists, tourist experience, international tourist experience, right? In heritage site. We can collect data from all heritage sites in Malaysia. It's not possible because of money, it's not possible because of time, 
and uh, many other factor influence on this data collection. So we choose Penang, we choose Melaka to collect data. So Melaka is our case, is our study area. Penang is our study area. This type of research is not case study. But if we focus on some type of study that is unique characteristic of Penang, and we want to investigate this unique characteristic, okay, this can be case study. Case study research cannot be done in other uh, study area. If, it's, if it can be done in other study area, it means we don't have any specific characteristic. You don't focus on characteristic of this case. Just this area is study area for data collection. So this study is not case study. All right? Okay. So sampling frame. Sampling frame is something after your limitation. So you choose some part of your population to collect data for international tourists. You choose Penang, you choose Melaka. So this is sampling frame. This is your study area, right? So this is meaning of sampling frame. I, I will be back to generalization, right? Okay, so this is sampling frame. Another thing is sample, but still, we, when we have a sampling frame, we cannot collect data from all some from all members of this sampling frame. Okay, we decide to collect data from Penang, right? But there are a few million tourists that are coming to visit the historical part of Penang. So our sampling frame number of sample, number of uh, members of our uh, uh, sampling frame is a few millions. So we can collect data from all these people? It's not possible. It's not possible and it's not necessary. It's not possible and it's not necessary. We can choose some of these people we can choose some of these people to collect data from them. So each member of our sampling frame or our population can be a sample. Can be a sample. So, and how we select this sample in our sampling frame or in our population, there are some sampling method. That based on this sampling method, we can select, we can identify our sample and collect data from this sample. This sample, number of this sample is sample size. We need to collect a minimum uh, sample size that should be enough for our research. What's the adequacy criteria for sample size later? So we have population, then we have sampling frame, then we have sampling method, and based on sampling method, we collect data from samples. And also we need to discuss sample size. Number of minimum sample, that, uh, number of minimum sample that we should collect, minimum. Can be more than this, but at least we have to collect this minimum number of sample. Okay? So we have these different layers and we need to explain. What's our population? What's our sampling frame? What's our sampling method? And uh, sample size. Sample is your population member. So when you explain your population, also you need to explain elements or member of your population or your sample. 
right? Okay, so we need to discuss different layers. Doctor, uh, in, this, uh, in this PPT, what's the meaning of the parameters here? I mean, last PPT, just now you showed it to us. This one? Uh, yeah, on the left side, the second line is parameters. Okay, in this sampling, what does parameters mean here? Parameters mean the criteria that, uh, uh, based on these criteria, we uh, actually choose our uh, sampling frame. Mm -hmm. sampling frame. Sorry. And later, our sampling method. These parameters uh, are used in uh, uh, purposive sampling. For example, uh, uh, gender, male and female, international, local tourist, right? Oh, what the parameters, what the characteristic of our population that these characteristics sometimes influence on our sampling method, right? In sampling method, I will explain. Okay, this is uh, some uh, uh, actually criteria to, for sampling decision. Okay, for sampling. Now I'm going to sampling method. We are the past population. We know about population and sampling frame based on our limitation. So sampling frame is based on our limitation. So, uh, and accessibility. So now go, go to sampling method. Among all population or sampling frame, we have many, many number of samples. We want to select a few number of these samples. What's the method of this selection? We have two main types of sampling method, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Probability sampling is for type of sampling method in or some situation that all population members, all population members have same or equal chance to be selected, right? So now we want to discuss sampling method, how we select our sample, right? Probability is for some situation that all population member or sampling frame member. So all members have same or equal chance to be selected. Non-probability non sampling, in non-probability sampling, uh, population members have different chance to be selected. Different chance to be selected. So they don't have same or equal chance. This is two main type of sampling, probability and non-probability. Under probability, we have different types of sampling. Random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. And under non-probability, we have quota sampling, purposive sampling, snowball sampling, and uh, Convenience sampling. Convenience sampling, right? So uh, this is main categories under uh, these two main categories, these two main types of sampling. Probability, uh, random, stratified, systematic and cluster, and non-probability, quota, progressive, snowball, and convenience sampling, right? Okay. Did you understand the meaning of probability and non-probability? Is it clear the meaning? Okay. No, 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 I uh, ask, uh, I uh, explain an example, just uh, somebody tell me this is probably, need probability sampling or non-probability sampling. Again, go back to international tourism. I want to collect data from international tourism heritage site. 
my sampling frame is Penang. So I'm going to collect data from international tourists. My sampling will be probability or non-probability? Non-probability purposive sampling. Non-probability purposive, why? Because you have a purposive uh, like international tourist no. before purposive Penang. before purposive is about non probability and part uh, because why non probability because um, uh, uh, because um because of the characteristics of non probability because it's Sorry, I because, cannot explain. Because, because, the because, because the respondent have no equal chance to be selected. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Who, who are agree with the, uh, your friend and who are disagree? I disagree. Disagree. Why? Because I think I think it's probability something. Why? Because because all the population, I mean population who have already visited. Uh, the uh, her, uh, cultural heritage uh, yes. scenic spot have, heritage. have yes have the equal chance to be selected. So I think among this population, the prob uh, the okay. chance is equal. So it's probability something. Okay. Any other opinion? Agree or disagree? Okay. Uh, you answer this question. Uh, uh, you uh, that uh, uh, say it's uh, probability sampling, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, probability sampling, all samples, all population members should have same chance to be selected, right? Yes. In one year, about uh, two million or more uh, in, uh, international tourists visit Penang. And all these tourists visit the uh, heritage site, right? Yeah. Okay. How can I uh, identify same chance for these two million tourists? Do you think the chance of the tourists that visit in January and the chance of tourists that visit Penang in April? and tourists visit Penang in December are same? No. No. So how, how we can say same chance to be selected? So they don't have same chance, right? Depends on, it depends on when we go for data collection. We go in January, or we go on December or April, right? So we cannot uh, go for data collection uh, weekdays throughout the year. Right? So, so the chance of the international tourists are visiting Penang are totally different. So they have different chance for to be selected for our research. For example, for tourists are visiting Penang in April, we go to uh, collect data in April, but uh, we prefer to go to collect data at night. Some tourists go uh, to a heritage site in daytime. Some tourists go to nighttime. So the uh, tourists that go to nighttime are more chance, are more chance to be selected, right? We go to a specific place. If you are familiar with Penang, uh, there are a, a famous place in Penang, Little India, right? Called Little India. So we go to Little India to collect data because our uh, study is about traditional food and Little India is about uh, traditional Indian food and cuisine, right? So we go to Little India to collect data. So international tourists that are going to Little India have more chance compared to other tourists, other international tourists, right? So for this type of population, it's not possible to identify chance of selection. 
So this type of research, this type of sampling is non-probability sampling. And as your friend said, it's correct, it's purposive sampling. Because you have some criteria to collect data. Right? You have some criteria to collect data. You go to Little India to collect data because your study is about traditional food. Experience about traditional food. Or you have some other criteria to select your uh, sample. Some uh, buildings in Penang are more famous and well-known for international tourists. So you selected these four places, these four buildings to collect data because the possibility that you can catch international tourists in these four places are higher. So we go to these places to collect data. So you have some criteria, you have some criteria and characteristics to collect and to select your sample. So this is purposive sample. Excuse me, then could you please? Uh, so, uh, at the ball is non probability sample. Yes. Uh, then, could you please give me an example as what kind of sampling is probable? No, probability sample. sampling. Yeah. Okay. You want to collect data from uh, Taylor's student. Your sampling frame is undergraduate student in Taylor's. Right? So, you know all you know the name of all Taylor's undergraduate student. Right? So you can put all name in the list. You have, uh, for example, 7,000 names. And among these 7,000, you can randomly select some numbers. Number one, number 10, number 250, number 520, number 780, right? So all these population members have same chance to be selected by you. This is an example of probability sampling. So it means that uh, if uh, probably sampling, it means uh, I should know all the I should exactly. know all the exactly. population, right? Exactly. You have to know, you have to know all population members for probability sampling. And all uh, samples have same chance to be selected. Right? Okay, thank you. There is a common mistake for international tourists. I've, I've seen some studies that for this type of study, mention <clears throat> our sampling is random sampling. Why? Because we randomly select uh, tourists in uh, Penang. So our sampling is random sampling. <laughs> this is not random sampling. It's convenient sampling. Uh, this can be purposive sampling, purposive sampling, but uh, it's not random. Random sampling is type of uh, sampling that you know all population member and it's possible, it's possible to select randomly these members and sample. Like the example of uh, Taylor's University, undergraduate student, right? Yes. So random sampling, it's type of a non it's type of probability sampling that you know all members and it's possible to select randomly from the list. List of students and based on number. So randomly you can choose some of them and this can be your sample. This is random sampling under probability. Another type of sampling under probability is systematic. For example, you want to collect data from uh, houses in one particular part of city. So you have the map of this part of city. And you know, there are, uh, for example, 4,000 houses in this part of city, right? So you, can, you want to choose 400 houses from this parcel. 
for this type of sampling, you know all, right? But you apply systematic. Systematic means systematically you choose one sample and skip uh, a few uh, population member. For this case, you want to collect 400. Okay, you collect from first house, skip nine, and you collect 11. Skip nine, you collect from 21. Skip nine, skip nine, you collect from 39. So systematically you choose your sample. So this is systematic sampling under probability. A stratified sampling and cluster sampling, stratified and cluster is based on some characteristics, based on parameters of your population. All right. For example, for example, in Taylor's University for the uh, undergraduate student, your sampling is uh, probability sampling, but you don't want to collect randomly. Why? Because in Taylor's, we have four different faculty. You want to collect data based on number of undergraduate students in each faculty. Right? So one faculty has uh, 3,000 students, but another faculty just uh, has 500 students. You want to collect data from this faculty based on these 500 and another faculty based on 3,000, right? So in this type of sampling, you divide your sample. Here is parameters. You divide your sample to four different groups, four different strata four different strata. Each strata is one faculty. So one faculty has 3,000, one faculty has 1,000, one faculty has 500, and another one is 500. So you want to collect 400. So you divide this 400 based on number of students in each faculty, right? So in total, for example, in total, you have uh, 8,000 students. One faculty, you have 4,000. One faculty, you have 2,000, 1,000, 1,000. Right? So, based on number of students, for faculty number one, you have to collect data for, you have to collect 200 data. Another faculty with 2,000, you collect, uh, 100, right? Another 150 and another 150. So you divide your sample based on number of uh, member of each strata. <clears throat> but within each strata, you collect randomly. So we have stratified random sampling or stratified class, stratified systematic sampling. So this refers to a uh, collecting sample within each sample, within each uh, group or strata. Cluster sampling is similar to stratified sampling, but the characteristic most of time is geographical char characteristic. For example, we divide a city to five different parts. And based on the number of uh, population of each part, we call number of houses in each part, we collect a portion of sample from those part. So this cluster. And cluster sampling also can be systematic and uh, random, cluster random or can, uh, cluster systematic sampling. Under non-probability, we have different convenience sampling. Convenience sampling is least reliable sampling. We have some friend and we want to collect data from our friend and relatives. Easy, convenient for us to collect data. So this type of sampling is least reliable. So try to not to use this sampling, right? Another one is most common under non-probability is purposive sampling. In purposive sampling, we have some criteria, right? So we know our sampling frame. 
But based on these criteria, we approach all respondents. Uh, already I explained about international tourists. We have a few buildings that we know international tourists go to this place. We know some uh, daytime these international tourists uh, visit these uh, four buildings. We go to a specific place in Penang that we know most of international tourists go to this place. So based on some criteria, we collect it. But for example, another criteria, we don't want to look at international, only international tourists. We want to see experience, tourist experience for tourists in heritage site. So we have local and international. So we make sure to collect data from both local and international tourists. Okay, so this is purposive. Another type of, uh, uh, most of, most of quantitative research that we don't know we don't know population members, sampling is purposive or judgmental sampling, not random sampling. But question, what about generalization? Okay, what about generalization later? Snowball sampling is another type of sampling. We select some sample and like a snowball, we find from first layer, we find another people in other layers. First, we have these two, and these two introduce another two. So we have three, and these three another introduce another person. Snowball sampling is suitable for qualitative research, not for quantitative. In quantitative research, it's very, very rare to use snowball sampling. And uh, the last one is quota sampling. Quota sampling is similar to stratified sampling. But the difference is within each group, in a stratified, stratified is under probability. So within each strata, we have to apply random or systematic sampling. But for quota sampling, under each uh, group, we run purposive sampling or judgmental sampling or convenience sampling. So under each group, we don't use probability sampling, but still we divide to two groups, divide to international and domestic tourists. But for international and domestic tourists, we apply non-probability sampling to collect. Okay, but what about generalization? Generalization is not only for coverage of population. Generalization, only one time of generalization is uh, coverage of population. It's for some type of research that you focus on some characteristics of this population, right? Some characteristic of this population. But sometimes, you focus on developing a theory, developing a model and test in new context. You want to investigate uh, effect of influencing factor on tourist experience in heritage site. Is it important that you uh, collect data from Penang or Melaka or other heritage site? Is it important? Any answer? No, I think no. You can choose also Melaka, right? Yeah. You can choose other heritage sites. But so the purpose of your study is not generalization of results to population of international tourists in Penang. This is not purpose of your study. Purpose of your study is generalization of your framework, your model. You want to test this model. You want to test this conceptual framework. So you want to generalize this conceptual framework. 
So for this type of uh, research, you are not going to generalize the result in your population. So probability sampling is not important. And also it's not possible. So generalization is not just about coverage of population is not about generalization of resulting population. Sometimes generalization refer to model and framework. So this is very key and important point for generalization. So this is <clears throat> actually against of this idea that all in, in quantitative research because the aim of quantitative research is generalization. So <clears throat> When we don't use probability sampling, how we can generalize our result in population? This is right. This is right uh, critics. But actually generalization is not, uh, the meaning of generalization is not only for population. Sometimes generalization in uh, social science discipline and the quantitative research is about generalization of model theory and framework. Okay. And uh, the last part is sample size. Actually, sample size also is very uh, important and the uh, tricky uh, part. For sample size, for minimum sample size, we need to fulfill two criteria. Two criteria, right? Most of time, we only consider one criteria. These two criteria are representativeness and power of your uh, uh, actually sample or power analysis. Second one depends on your analysis technique. And for same sample can be different based on your analysis technique. So in second part, you need to provide adequate data based on your analysis technique. For example, if you want to do only uh, descriptive analysis, for descriptive analysis, you don't need the large sample, right? But uh, if you want to use advanced technique like covariance-based structural equation modeling, you need large sample to get enough power for your analysis. For example, for uh, CBSAM, you need the 10 to 20 times of number of items. For example, if you have uh, 50 items in your questionnaire, you need at least 500 samples to run your analysis. So this part is for adequacy of data based on your analysis technique. But another criterion is representativeness. At the same time, your sample should represent your population. For first one, we have other method, other approach to calculate minimum sample size. We have Morgan table, we have Cochrane uh, formula, we have some online calculator that based on number of population, they can calculate minimum sample size. But this minimum sample size is connected to population, not analysis technique. So you need to answer these two questions for your minimum sample size. One, what's the minimum sample size to represent your population? Also for this part, sometime, sometime 
if you submit a paper in top tier journal, for this representativeness, reviewer asks you to check this representativeness based on characteristic of your population. For example, if your population, based on a statistic, you collect data from a city or from uh, customers of a product, but you know main characteristic, how many, uh, how, how, uh, how many percent male and female, and uh, you know age group that use this product, right? So your sample, the characteristic of your sample should be similar to your population. So for example, if in your population you have 60% male and 40% female, your sample should be similar to this one. 60% male and 40% female, right? Or age group, if your population uh, only the, our young people. So your or majority of them, 90% are young people. So your uh, sample cannot be 50%, 50%. So your sample should represent your population. Size and characteristic. This is one criteria. Another one is should be adequate, should be enough to run your analysis. And for this part, there are different uh, methods actually to calculate minimum sample size uh, based on analysis technique. One of the best is using G power. So G power is very easy to use. Okay, let me show you. Okay, the, you cannot see my screen, just you can see a slide. Okay. This is G Power software. You can download it, it's free to download and easy to use. So this G Power is based on analysis technique. Okay. So if you have a framework, for example, with the five independent variable and one dependent variable, right? So you want to see what's the minimum sample size for based on your analysis technique. You want to use multiple regression, for example, or regression based analysis. When you apply G power, here there are some uh, test family and statistical test. Okay. For, uh, for regression based analysis that is common for testing hypothesis, you have to use F-test. Just to show you an example uh, that how you can use G-Power. But based on your analysis technique, you can uh, apply and calculate minimum sample size. And uh, in analysis, uh, statistical test, linear multiple regression. Uh, and here you have, uh, you need to key in some information. The default effect size is uh, 0 0.15, but you can uh, change uh, to 0 0.110, but uh, you can keep this one because uh, the default is uh, 0 0.15. Uh, error uh, probability can keep 0 0.05 and 0 0.95. And here you can uh, uh, key your predictors or independent variable. For example, if you have five independent variables, okay. So here you can get minimum sample size. So minimum sample size to get power of 0 0.95 is 138. Okay, 
based on analysis, your analysis technique. For uh, social science, the minimum power is 0 0.8. So here you can change, here is power. You can change power to 0 0.8 minimum. And uh, to get minimum power of, uh, minimum acceptable power, 0 0.8 power for your analysis, 92 sample is minimum sample for based on analysis technique. Second criterion, not first one. First one you have to discuss based on your population. Right? But for uh, power analysis, you can use G power and report the result of G power to justify adequacy of your sample for your analysis technique. Okay. 